This episode of the Productivity is Podcast is brought to you by the Now Year Wall Calendar. The new year is just around the corner, and it seems like it might be a very wide corner right now, but it's approaching faster than you think. The Now Year Calendar can give you the bird's eye view you'll need to help you ensure that you can get the things you need to do ought to do, and want to do in 2019 done. I have a special offer for Productivity as Podcast listeners that I'm going to release to you during this episode, so you want to stick around and hear that so you can get a special deal on the Now Year calendar. But for now, let's get on with the show. Welcome to the Productivity is Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Vardy, and this week on the show, we're going to talk about the serving mindset, something I need to, and I can always get better at. Uh, I have Farnish Brock on the show with me today. She is the author of The Serving Mindset, Stop Selling and Grow Your Business. What do I mean by I need help with this? Well, I mean, I believe I serve people. I believe what I offer is valuable. This podcast is one of these things. I have coaching uh, clients that I work with and all that stuff, but I've always had a bit of a, a an icky feeling around selling. And I dive into this during the beginning of our discussion. And what we talk about is how to shift the mindset from going from this selling idea to stop selling to start serving. And uh, it's it's a really fascinating book. I'm, I'm glad that she sent, was able to send me a copy. I went through it. And there's lots of lessons I learned from it. There's five different mindsets that kind of go into the serving mindset. Uh, we talk about those. We talk about introverts and how uh, this mindset can help them. We talk about pricing. We talk about the scaling opportunities that businesses have, products and services, how you can scale even with services, uh, which ways you can do that, and how to kind of uh, maybe define your avatar uh, for clients in a completely different way. And and honestly, how a serving mindset can be more productive and efficient than a selling mindset. Uh, let's get into that conversation right now. Enough enough with me. Let's get to the two of us. Here's my conversation with Farnoosh Brock here on the Productivity Podcast. I'd like to welcome Farnoosh Brock to the Productivity Podcast. Farnoosh, thanks for joining me today. Mike, such a pleasure to be on your podcast. Thanks for having me on. So we were just chatting before we started uh, recording uh, about the fact that we have crossed paths uh, either either in person or we've just been to the same events before and ha- either at the same time or in different years and stuff. So it's good to actually finally connect and have you on the show. Thank you. Yes, it's wonderful how our paths cross and it feels like we've known each other, even though sometimes I have never met some <laughs> of my friends, but it's just wonderful that we can connect in such capacity on in the online world, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, uh, like you said, the the online space allows us to kind of have a connection before we've even, you know, necessarily yeah. met in person. And and I actually find that when you meet in person, it further strengthens it. It's almost like you you are a real person. <sighs> you, you, are, you are more than your avatar kind of thing. Oh, for sure. It's like you're meeting your friends for the first time. It's a beautiful feeling. And so I am sure that we will meet again. I love Vancouver. We hope to be back there soon in the summer, though. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now now it's kind of I mean, at the time that we're recording this from November to like May, it's kind of gray here. I mean, vitamin (laughs) D pills are the norm here. Uh, Whereas whereas, you know, if you're, uh, you know, and that's why we're actually going to get away for part of the winter. It's just it doesn't get snowy here. Here, though, right? It just gets rainy and, and, and with a, with a lack of sun and stuff, it can get a little, you know, it can, it can put you in the wrong mindset. And, and, and that's yes. something that you want to avoid. Now, speaking of mindset, I'm holding, <laughs> I'm holding to, first off, I'm holding your new book, but to be fair, I'm also drinking a smoothie. So <laughs> for oh breakfast, God. so worlds are colliding here. I, I mean, and, and for those of you who are, are listening, uh, and and don't know who Farnoosh is. She's she's has a history of smoothie books that I'll I'll link to I'll, I'll link to your your <laughs> your your website. So it's going to have that stuff there. But we're going to sure. talk about something completely different today because this is this yeah. new book, uh, the Serving Mindset: Stop Selling and Grow Your Business. Is is not I would say it's a departure in terms of what you've authored, but not necessarily a departure of what you've been doing. Would that be apt? Thank you. That's so accurate. In fact, just yesterday, I was talking to Farnoosh Torabi, um, the personal finance expert, and she was saying something similar in that, what made you write this next book? And you're absolutely right. This is what I've been doing. And the recipe books, uh, Juices and Smoothies, were actually more accidental, even though I'm very proud of them. 
So I am glad that I'm bringing the focus and attention back to where my real passion is, if you will. So uh, first off, we've had actually the, the gentleman who wrote the four, Michael Bungay Stanier, again, someone who we've both met. I've met him at the World Domination Summit. Yes. And, and uh, he's been on the show before. I'll link to his episode in right. the show notes. But I want to talk to you about this idea of mindset right out of the gate, because with the work that I do, and I'm actually, uh, it's funny, today, later on after I'm doing, uh, today's my audio day, so it's it's a mindset thing for me to sit down and do all of my audio work for a very specific period of, 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 of the week, and Wednesdays are my days to do that. But later today, I'm actually going to be doing a, a training in my, in, in my city, uh, just a small training for some freelancers, and I'm going to give them the option, do they want to learn about mindset, or do they want to learn about method? And mm. I want to I want to kind of dive into the idea of mindset first with you because I think a lot of people put the method before the mindset, and this mm-hmm. is one of the things I think that well I know having gone through the book that you address is is this idea of before you put these methods of and and the idea of selling because that's mm-hmm. kind of one of is, is that selling method you've got to have the proper mindset in place because if you don't then then you the results could be I wouldn't say they could be catastrophic but they certainly won't be what you're what you're looking to get right. Yes, yes. Well said. I like the word method. I use application or integration, but method is even better. And the thing is, uh, Mike, I think that if the mindset doesn't come first, then the method doesn't cement, if you will, as well as it could as it has the potential to do so mm-hmm. because you you haven't explored your thinking. And so you're taking on someone else's words, maybe an expert, maybe a trainer, what have you, and they may very well be right, but you're basically taking on someone's method and hoping that it would work for you. Whereas if you go into your mindset and explore how you are actually thinking about a particular concept, and we're going to talk about selling in, in particular today, then you really have to uh, come on board or else, you know, inquire, why do I not believe this? And what do I believe? And just really take a look at the stories you tell yourself. And then when you have the right mindset and you really believe the certain beliefs around that mindset, then the method is so much more effortless to adopt. So as as we're uh, going through this interview right now, um, and I try to keep these things timeless, but let's face it, there's certain times of year where a, you get a deluge of emails that are all related to, hey, get my thing, it's on sale right now, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, email marketing happens, especially in my business, around the the late part of the uh, of the calendar year because people want you to prepare for the year to come, right? Especially when it comes mm-hmm. to time management productivity. Whenever I get stuff like that, and, I, and, and, you know, I mean, there are people out there that I see that this, there's almost like the same ones that come up again and again. And, and you know, we don't have to name names, but I'm sure that you know exactly some of the ones mm-hmm. that we're talking about. Those kind of things make me feel icky. And as I went through the book, yes. I, uh, there's, there's these biases that show up that kind of make you think, you know, that, that put you in the wrong frame of mind when it comes to selling. Can you start to dive into some of the things that, um, and we'll, 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 we'll explore the, def- the, the five different mindsets in a little bit, but um, some of the, the myths that come up that people, uh, that keep them from putting themselves in a position to serve and, and, and put themselves in a position to actually do better when it comes to selling because of this, this serving mindset. Right. So if I understand your question correctly, and I know what you're talking about in terms of like people thinking they need to pitch or market to you yeah. more heavily at a certain point in time. But, but um, you know, I mean, the, the idea is that, you know, we think about selling in a way that doesn't b- benefit us. I mean, a lot of us are biased about selling because like you said, it gives you that icky feeling, Mm -hmm. right? When you're being, when you're the recipient of others selling to you. And when we are in business, we are uh, the people who would be doing the selling to others. And so it's really um, a little bit at, at, at odds with what, how we want to be treated or how we want to feel. And we feel we have to compromise those values in order to run a successful business and, you know, a profitable business, what have you. And so, and, and is, am I going in the right direction? No, no, absolutely. So? Absolutely. Because Perfect. I mean, the thing is, is that what happens in situations like that is that it actually, when I see stuff like that, there's, it's the same thing that happens with content too, right? Like, oh, uh, if someone's sending this email to me about, let's say their new calendar product or their, their new, you know, course or whatever, sure. surely everyone is seeing this. So who am I to do that? Like that bias shows up, right? Like, yes. you know, so all of these things kind of put you, you get in your own way. And, and, yes. and, I, and I think that when you talk about these mindsets and, and I definitely want to get into the, the, the idea, how do you like, 
well, let's go into that. Like how, what's one of the strategies that you take to get out of your own way when these kind of, yes. uh, these kind of ideas or, or myths enter your head? Okay, wonderful. So, so I would like to address the fact that um, if you feel that you are comparing yourself to others in your market, and there's no shortage of that, and the internet, thank you very much, makes it so much easier mm-hmm. for us to compare ourselves all the time, and therefore question, question our own value in the marketplace. And so uh, that's the question, that's the foundation, I think, before we even get to the serving mindset that I believe is necessary in that you have to believe believe what you offer has value and can genuinely help the person you are targeting. You may not be the only one making that offer and helping that person, but you need to believe you are someone that can do that. And so if you have doubts about that, that may be a different direction we can go. But I believe that needs to be in place firmly before we talk about, okay, now let's see how you think about selling and how we can help you think in a way that actually helps you and your customers. That makes total so, sense. That makes total sense. And and I think right. that imposter syndrome yeah. and all that stuff shows up. Yes. But, but I think one of the ways, and I want you to elaborate on this, one of the ways is you're probably, I mean, the fact that you even have this notion means you likely have evidence, either data-driven or anecdotal evidence that should support the fact that what you're offering has value, right? Yes, yes. And that is always very useful, especially for those of us who are more technical. We are more logical and analytical. We need the facts. So somebody telling you, well, Mike, your products are good and you are doing a great job doesn't necessarily help you come on board with, oh, my God, I am really offering something valuable. But if somebody actually comes to you and says, Mike, I bought your product It made a difference. Thank you. There is a fact. You helped someone. Therefore, you can help more people. So, yes, the the um, the the factual data is helpful. And that's why a few years in your business, doing what you're doing, finding your way, building experience can be so helpful in building that confidence and taking yourself to that next level, which hopefully we can get into with the serving mindset. So whenever I work with people about time management, they always have this idea that they don't have enough time. They don't have control over their time. Time moves on. Like they have all of these biases. All of the, this has kind of been ingrained in them, whether it's uh-huh. from from uh, the environment they're around, whether it's just from learned behavior, all that stuff. You talk about these these five mindsets where, you know, the first mindset is this idea of you're not selling, you're serving, like just Mm -hmm. flipping the script on that. Can you, can you kind of dive into why that, that helps you when it Mm -hmm. comes to, especially in a world where we just talked about, like, there's a lot of different um, competition and there's a lot of different other options out there. When you put yourself in that mindset of, Hey, look, I'm, I'm serving you. I'm not selling to you. uh, It, it, it changes the game. So can you dive into that a bit? Yes, yes. And I want to relate it to productivity and efficiency because I think it's smart, right? Mm -hmm. We need to be product and efficient. And it's not just time. It's also as we get older, or maybe it's just me, you realize it's your energy that you need to really watch. So why is serving, not selling more efficient, more smart, uh, smarter, more productive? It's because I think it simplifies the whole thing. And I've experienced this firsthand, Mike, in that when I was approaching selling in my business in the traditional way, which is to market and to build my pitch and to, you know, and there is good in that, but it wasn't working for me because it didn't make me feel really good about what I was doing. And so something wasn't quite right. And I wanted to feel really good about what I was doing and still command premium prices because I knew what I had was of value. So I needed to find a way to make this work and to align to my values. And as I adopted this serving approach and I followed some role models in the industry and decided to, it it just simplifies the whole thing. It basically comes down to one question I ask myself when I enter a conversation, say a conversation with a prospect. And that question is, how can I help them? Can I help them? Am I the person to help them? Well, I, I realize that's three questions, but it's really just about whether I can be 
of help to this person in the capacity of their problem. And that makes it so much simpler than having my agenda and my pitching and my features and why I'm better because it removes me from the spotlight, which was such a relief and makes me come into this conversation with a simple agenda item of, can I help you? But you have to do it in a framework Mm -hmm. because if there is no framework, all of us know how to help others and we want to help them. But I think we get a little carried away with overcompassion and then we get outside the framework of a business context because we're still running a business here. And so I think applying the framework on top of the question can I help you and am I the right person can really help you apply the serving mindset. Let's talk a little bit about this idea of value and and time, because uh, I just had a conversation with someone about this idea of people who charge by the hour versus charging based on value. And and so they 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 base it on project. And actually, speaking of which, I'm going to be doing this talk today to to freelancers Mm -hmm. and they're going to be a lot of them will be, you know, either charging by the hour. uh, Most, I would imagine, as opposed to by project. Um, Is there a danger in attaching like an hourly kind of rate to this Mm. serving mindset kind of thing. And you talk about this in your book about the idea of like consulting, like doing uh, complimentary consulting calls. You talked in the book, you you mentioned a specific example of uh, I think it was a decorator or somebody like that that came in Mm -hmm. and said, you know, they, they charged you for even just showing up to give you the consult. And by guess who didn't get the job because of, not only because yes. of that, but there was their attitude or surrounding it. Right. So yes. th- this idea of attaching time to value and time to money, let's say in particular, because I think that's more of what this is yes. about, uh, as opposed to you saying, you know, what, I'm willing to spend X number of hours just delivering value and serving because uh-huh. I know that the end game is is much greater than just nickel and diming. Yes, I'm giving you an A plus already on your reading. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent. And um, just to tie it back to the framework. Mm -hmm. So the hourly um, and we we all start somewhere in business. So, you know, if you're just starting your business, yes, hourly may make sense. But I got away from hourly when I realized it had so many limitations in the coaching business. And I have worked with clients where I have helped them and they are in different businesses, consulting, IT services, what have you. So I feel that the hourly makes it about you and you become a commodity when you charge hourly. And there is most certainly a psychological limit on that. And it's not very high Mm -hmm. as opposed to when you are very clear about the outcomes you help your customer create. Those can be tangible, such as financial outcomes, additional employees, efficiency in hours saved, that's tangible, measurable, or intangible, such as more confidence on the team, better leadership skills in that, on the staff, et cetera, et cetera. When you are clear on those tangibles, when you can articulate those tangibles and intangibles to your customer, you can charge based on those outcomes. And that upper limit is up there. It is pretty high and it's because you are showing them the investment. This is an investment. It doesn't become a price or an expense. You become an investment they make and you're clear on the return on their investment and they are more than willing to invest. If you do your job right, they are more than willing to invest in you. And it becomes a project rate or based on outcomes. And um, the upper limits on that uh, open you up to many, many new possibilities. We're going to take a break from the show now to talk about this week's sponsor. And this week's sponsor is something that's near and dear to my heart. It's the Now Year Wall Calendar. It's available in tall or wide orientation. And I've crafted this in conjunction with NewYear.net. We've been doing this for the past few years. I really love having my entire year at a glance on the wall in my office so I can do things like map out vacation, uh, put certain uh, waypoints and benchmarks that I want to plan out, 
things that I wouldn't necessarily put uh, in a uh, Google Calendar or wouldn't necessarily see in my digital calendar, they go on this wall calendar so I can look at it and know where my commitments lie, uh, both big and small. Uh, things that also go on this calendar are like, you know, my daily themes. Uh, my, my monthly themes go on here as well, as well as the three words that I use to help me guide my year. It's a big calendar, 25 inches by 36 inches and shows you the whole year at once. There's no gaps, so it's it's continuous, which is great. It's beautiful. It's it's really got some great functional features and very minimalist, if, if that's your thing. Uh, it spans all 12 months from January to December of 2019. So if you start your year in January, I don't, but I mean, the January to December traditional calendar year is what this calendar is designed for. It's paper surface, so the great thing about that is, first off, it keeps the cost a little bit lower, number one. Number two is that you kind of have to commit. I mean, you could write it down in in, in pencil, uh, which is which is fine, and I often do that. I'll write things down in pencil on the calendar. Once I solidify them, then I use a, a Sharpie, different color Sharpies, to signify what realm of my life that that, that area is going to fall into, that task, that date, whatever. And that way I can see it and know immediately at a glance, hey, this is related to productivity. This is related to my personal life. This is family stuff, all right at a glance. So you can use pencil as kind of like a rough draft, and then you can use uh, Sharpies or, or color pens or whatever to kind of make it uh, permanent. And that that shows a commitment. There's also a legend on this thing as well. So you can see, hey, what does this color mean? And, and so on and so forth. It's got larger boxes. The weeks start with Monday. I start my week on Sundays, I know, but Monday is traditionally uh, the day that most people start their week. And a lot of calendars for, start with Sundays because that's how the Gregorian calendar has been assembled. And, you know, it's it's just a really, really uh, clean looking calendar. Uh, I wish I had this thing out earlier this year. We, we you know, we, we didn't really have it out as early as I wanted. So I wanted to get it out now and I wanted to provide you with the ability to get it and put it up on your wall and start using it right away. So if you go to newyear.net slash products slash now year, now hyphen year, so newyear.net, and that's N-E-U-Y-E-A-R dot net slash products slash now hyphen year, you will be able to pick up this calendar. I'll link to it in the show notes, but also if you enter the code fresh start, you'll get 20% off the calendar up until Groundhog Day 2019, which is another day that I kind of do a, a bit of a, a restart to my year or reboot. So uh, again, go to newyear.net, that's N-E-U-Y-E-A-R.net slash products slash now hyphen year, and then enter the code fresh start to get your now year annual wall calendar brought to you by productivityist and newyear.net. I'd like to thank Jesse at New Year for putting this thing together. I really do appreciate it. We've had a great relationship and uh, I look forward to hearing what you do with that calendar uh, and, and take advantage of that 20% off offer while it lasts. That's it for, for, for talking about the calendar. Now let's get back to talking about the serving mindset with Farnish Brock here on the Productivity Podcast. Let's get back to it. Let's talk about opening things up to the possibilities of just adopting that serving mindset, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and let's talk about those five different mindsets. I want to explore those a little sure. bit. So can you, let's do it. Uh, and, and I don't want to remember, everyone's going to pick up this book. So we're not going to give away the farm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, not worried we're, about that we're at just, all. We're just going to, uh, we're just going to get, you know, we want, we, obviously the idea is to, to provide value and to serve. So what can we do? Uh, what are the five different minds, like the five different mindsets that people can adopt to sh make that paradigm? shift from thinking about, oh, God, I'm selling to, no, wait, I'm serving. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So that's great. So the first one is, it's this, it's this, if you only take away one thing from this conversation, and maybe you don't need the book, like if we're really mm -hmm. serving you here, if Mike and I are really serving you here today, if you walk away from this conversation and you can transform your business with one idea, I'm a happy clam. So, uh, so just, just the idea of I am not selling, I am serving. If you go into a conversation and I talk about conversations because I believe real business opportunities are created in conversations, not over email, not behind websites. So I'm going to make that assumption that you're going to make an effort to have a conversation. But if you just believe and remind yourself in that conversation, I'm here to serve, not sell. I am not selling, I'm serving. Throughout that conversation, I believe we have the ability to distinguish that just, just on an intuition level, 
So you will feel yourself moving toward your self-serving agenda and that's selling like, I hope they buy, I hope they like me. That's all about you. You're in selling mode versus I am curious what Mike really needs right now. I am really curious what he struggles with. I'm going to ask him what's behind the fear in this decision. That's you serving because you're making it all about Mike, but you're doing it in a way that then later, if it makes sense, helps you to connect the dots back to you being possibly the person to help him. Make sense? Yes, totally. Okay, so the next one, and this one, um, I was inspired. I went to engineering school. So this was inspired by a lot of my techie, geeky friends, where when we go to engineering school, we basically adopt this identity that I am an engineer. I am this. And so this mindset is about enabling your new identity to emerge. Because when you go into business or when you partner with someone or when you are in a position where you are now responsible for bringing business into the enterprise, whatever skill or identity you have, it's still there, but you need to be able to expand beyond that. And one expression you may be familiar is wearing different hats, but I've never been a favorite of that expression. Mm -hmm. I think it's really about growing beyond, in my case, an electrical engineer. That doesn't mean I gave all that up. I still use some of those skills, but I am also a speaker. I am also a coach. I am also someone who is influencing people, training them. And so to allow yourself to adopt this new identity, you may have to do some inner work. And we talk about that in this mindset. Let's shift to number three. Okay. Hopefully that was okay. No, no, no. This is great. <laughs> like, and I think, I think that the key here is everyone that's listening is, is yeah. should be taking notes. And, and this is the other thing too, is like, you got to think about it. I mean, that, that second one, I, th there's ways that you can do that. Like, for example, you talked about the idea of being an engineer, you know, and, and, and adopting that, that identity. I mean, one of the things that I, that I've talked about on the show before is I have a whole bunch of green lantern stuff all over my office. This idea of a trigger of like this will, because green, green lantern superpower is willpower. And so by wearing the green lantern ring and having this stuff around me, it, 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 it propels me. It triggers me to say, you know, this is, this is who I am. This is who I am in this moment. This is who I am when I'm in this office space. Ergo, I can, accomplish these things. So I think there's a lot of similarities there. But what's number three? What's the third mindset? Sure. So number three, it's about caring for our prospects and actually showing it. And so I speak to those of us who have a limiting belief where we say things like, you know, I'm not good with people. I am mm. an introvert. I'm shy. This isn't my strength. This is who I am. And so this is, this mindset is about, um, overcoming that limiting belief because you may very well be an introvert and shy and you can stay an introvert and shy, but you still need, if you want to build the trust and the connection that I talk about in the relationships you want to build in order to then secure the clients you want to have, you need to, to articulate that you care. Right. And um, if you do it through, for instance, I had a, a client, he owned his business um, and he still does actually. And he would go into a presentation. He would do a demo for his customers, Mike. Mm -hmm. Brilliant demo, uh, data driven. This is what we do. This is the numbers. This is the proof. This is why it will work. But very clinical and um, void of empathy. Right, right, because that was just his style, and so he wanted them to to basically understand that because he's there, and by by him doing that, of course he cares. But sometimes the person listening isn't the same as you. They mm -hmm. are not the technical, analytical, dry person. They are different personality. We the world is full of people with different personalities. And so for you to be able to relate to that person, you may have to express some empathy. You may have to say, you know, I want you to know that we really care about the challenge you are facing. And here is how we really hope to be able to be of some service to you. You may be, need to say something like that. And so I talk about how to help you um, show curiosity and empathy to really express all the hard work that you're doing in words. 
And I think that that for, uh, I'll use a personal example is the one to one coaching that I do, uh, which I don't do a lot of, um, but uh-huh. I'm very uh, that that intimate level. Um, whether you're introverted, and by the way, great resource for introverts, Quiet by Susan Cain, fantastic book. Yes. Um, you can put yourself in that position to, uh, and this is this is the one thing that, and and I'll touch on this a little bit with you uh, as we shift into the to the, the remaining mindsets, is this idea of we hear about like oh build products, products scale, services don't scale as well, but some, hmm. but you don't necessarily need to, and, and I don't want to get your thoughts on this. I don't necessarily believe that 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 has to be the way that you operate. If you no. can, if you can. Um, I, I have a program where I work with a certain amount of individuals. We work for an entire year together and we work one on one. We're not working in a group environment because there's lots mm-hmm. of group coaching experiences. But what mm-hmm. that does is it allows you to really connect. And the key, the key, f- I think, for that is um, if you're introverted, it's really going to be helpful because I find that like, you know, and I'm, I'm a bit of a pseudo extrovert, so I can be <laughs> extroverted. And, and this is talked about in, in Susan's book, Susan Kane's book. Um, when I'm performing on stage, and I literally say performing because that's kind of what it is, um, when I'm done, I need to withdraw and and kind of decompress. When I mm-hmm. do a coaching session with one person, the decompression level is not as great because there's that connection there. There's a deeper connection. And inherently, the value increases. Yesterday alone, we I, I normally schedule hour-long calls with these clients. Yesterday, mm-hmm. our call went on for 90 minutes. And I wasn't sitting there going, oh, I'm, uh, we're done. Yes. Like, that's it. Because... There's something about that that I'm getting something out of it too, which is great, and that's that's a byproduct of it. So I think that that when you when the care factor shows up, and and you can tell when someone doesn't care or when they're like, okay, we're going to call it a night. Um, that depending on what the product is, depending on what the service is, uh, it can change the 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 way that you're viewed. It can change a whole bunch of the perspective, optics, yes. all that stuff. So I yes. think that that if if you're an introvert, like you're talking about, um, you're going to be able to pre-qualify people who may not be the te- the the technical person. You could say, okay, you know, what? we're maybe not a good fit or because you won't be as nervous or you won't be as you're going to be able to dig into that person's particular problems, which means that the care factor immediately should go up, especially if you you have that mindset in place. Right. Yes. Yes. Yes, very well said. Yes, I like that. I like all the, um, the examples you shared. And I think it's it's good. I work with a lot of introverts, actually, even though I'm more of an extrovert. And I find that um, it's a shame because introverts, I know they're smart people, very skilled, very talented. But the stories they may tell themselves around selling really limit their potentials. And mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be that way. And so I'm glad we explored that angle a little bit. And I want to talk about that. We're going to get into the next one here because I think that this is important. Um, but let's let's talk. Let, let's take a little bit of a, a pause here to talk about this idea of products versus services. Because, you know, sure. I, in today's, uh, you know, Internet world, uh, you know, the idea of you got to build digital products, right? Build digital products because you can have many of you can have the one to many idea, right? Which which the is volume. not which is not which is not a bad idea. Let's let's mm-hmm. talk about that on its face, but it's not going to be for everybody. And it's one that um, when I first started doing coaching, it was the quote easiest for me to get into because I was the product in a lot of ways, right? My mm-hmm. knowledge, my expertise. And the one thing that I've struggled with um, is taking that translation because all of my, you know, coaching services have generally been one to one have been very intimate. They've been very, you know, like you're, you're dealing with one very particular person. I look back and say, okay, well, how can I apply this to a broader, broader group of people? It, it, what do you, what are your thoughts on this idea of, okay, uh, get out of services and start making products based on that. And that way you can scale. Like where, where do you land on hmm. that spectrum? You know, and, and it's, it's a great topic and I'm going to try to be, uh, I guess, brief about it. Sure. But I could talk yeah. about that for hours. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's actually, uh, services can be great. I mean, there is no upper limit. I know of hundred thousand dollar apprenticeship programs, yeah. and that is not even the top, top, uh, level of coaching. And that's not limited to just you know, one person or another, you can get there. So I find that if you want to offer yourself in a professional service capacity, then there is huge opportunity. You definitely need to get get away from the hourly. I don't know anyone who has reached 
really, really high levels on an hourly level. But otherwise, you can model it in the, in the way that you believe. And, and I think it can work. I know successful people who take on very few clients. That's how I've run my business for uh, the last few years. Very few clients, a couple of group programs. And that was a choice. And I may adapt and grow. But I think it's also good if you want to appeal to more than the select few, if you want to have a higher impact, then you want to have products that are accessible to many, like you said, like a book, mm -hmm. yep. like a, a small program, because not everyone will get to experience you. And if your message is really powerful and you want to reach a large group of people, then it makes sense for you to have a different way to reach those people or rather for those people to reach your message through a more um, uh, easier um, access, right? Such as a book, such as a, a short uh, audio program, what have you. I see benefit in both. I really think it depends on your goal. What are you trying to accomplish? Right. And, and I think the other thing, too, is that uh, at least from my perspective, is if you decide uh, that you're going to do a lot of these, small, you know, more intimate service type programs and mm -hmm. then then and which is kind of the road i've gone down largely you can double triple down on that like you said you can go into the like the higher yield higher level which you should do and yes the hourly stuff that was one of the things i've really struggled with was the how do you get out of the hourly mindset because it's quantifiable people go oh yes. well one hour equals this therefore because you can't you have to really and that's why you said frameworks are important you need to break it down so that yes. they can see the inherent value behind it right you need to educate people because mm -hmm. everyone thinks in terms of hourly. They expect you to do hourly. I had a client who insisted I should offer hourly anyway. And I thought that was just amusing that he was telling me how to run my business, but I entertained the idea and it was fascinating. A lot of people think that way, but yes, you need to get away from it and educate your customers and clients as to why you do your business the way that you do. Right. Now let's talk about pricing because that's the oh, fourth dear. mindset. And th I, I got to say that there's a friend of mine, Chris Ducker, who uh, every time I hear about- Oh, I know Chris. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So every time um, I think about pricing something, uh, Chris's voice enters my head. I'm not going to do a British accent because it, I, I won't do it justice, but it's like, charge what you're worth. Charge what you're worth. Yeah. Whatever you're thinking, you're tr you're not charging enough. And, and so- Let's talk about that fourth mindset, because I think pricing is that massive struggle that a lot of especially a lot of people struggle with, especially when they're trading. And I mean, we'll use the the, the reductive term of trading time for money, because yes. that's essentially what to a certain degree, that's what this is. It's maybe not trading hours per dollars, but it's time, whether it's I'm going to invest X number of and energy, right, which you talked about time and energy sure. for for that for that money. So the shift I want you, I want to offer you the shift in perspective is that's not what you're doing. Right. You are actually trading what you are helping someone create for the investment they make in you. So you, they are not, this is a phrase I use if I have to go there in conversations. You know what, Mike, you're not going to be paying me for my time. You are paying me for the outcomes that you are creating with my help in a more efficient, productive, smarter, and a lot more cost-effective way. In other words, you may be able to go and do what I'm helping you create today and get it done, but the, the reason you're bringing me in is because you're going to save in your own time, money, learning skills by hiring a professional. Mm -hmm. And so you're not paying for my time. I may spend three hours with you. I may spend 30 hours with you. That's actually none of your business. You know, the hours we spend together, sure, we have to coordinate that. But really, what I want you to base the value of this investment on is the results we're helping you create. Right. And there has to be a level of trust that you believe I can be a participant, a, a, a partner in that relationship worth what you are going to invest. And so it's really not about you. It's about your ability to bring the value you can bring into, uh, into someone's business, career, life, what have you. And that's where I think a very important skill comes in, the skill to understand your value and to articulate it clearly and powerfully to your prospective clients. And what's interesting there is the, there's a snowball effect here too, right? Because if you do that, if you make that shift, that 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 shift in perspective as to I'm not trading time for money, I'm trading, you know, it, and it's not even a trade, it's an investment of, 
you know, energy and stuff it, towards the outcomes that you're going to see. You're going to you're going to not just see, but it, your experience. It allows you to find your ideal clients better because uh, mm-hmm. then then all of a sudden you're going, OK, well, yeah, the client that's going to pay X is this is the outcomes they want. Therefore, I'm going to charge X. Right. You know what I mean? Like, whereas a lot of people, yeah. they kind of put the cart before the horse. They say, yes. you know, well, um, which is which, again, further to that makes you decide, OK, well, you know what? I don't want to leave these people that can't afford that high value offering uh, in the dust, but I definitely want to have something for them. So what what other product can I create that's for that avatar? And then all of a sudden. So instead yes. of you going, what's my avatar? You're going, what do I want to offer? What am I offering? What yes. are the outcomes I'm offering? And ergo, as a result, now I can kind of find my avatars based on that. Does that make sense? Exactly, exactly. And I even like to think, and this is a less, for me, it was a less stressful way to think about it. It's not me finding them, it's them finding me. Right. Right. So we create that uh, that scenario that you just described for us. And we, uh, you know, we get clear on what it is we are offering and we are creating for others. And then through the work that you do, people will find you. And it's actually very good when when the right clients come to you and you're clear who isn't your client, because as you do the work that we talk about in the serving mindset, you will most certainly reject some people. And that is okay. Yeah. Now, second, now, (laughs) last thing uh, on this mindset, and this is more of a, a tactical, uh, choice. And, and I think it's, again, you may say it's, it's, it's up to you. Would you put pricing on your, of your services on your website? Yes or no? No. Okay. No, because you know what? It's not helpful because it's out of context. I mean, I would put it for my $37 10 minute invigorator program, which is brilliant, Mm -hmm. but that's a product. You don't need me to engage there. You need to make a decision without my help. But I, I, it doesn't make sense. I mean, if you're charging hourly, which is a different model, maybe, but I don't recommend that. But no, because it's out of context. It makes people price shop. I don't want to be price shopped. If you want to be price shopped, put it. Well, then you're outcome shopping. (laughs) Yeah. So I just think it doesn't help you. And and I and I've heard the arguments that it are you being manipulative and you're not gonna tell them what no, it's about how it's not relevant until I've had a conversation with them. If I'm gonna be hiring, I mean, if they're gonna be hiring me to work to do some deep work as opposed to say an hour of service, which I don't do. So again, it's the level of professional service you deliver. And if you're at the deep level we're talking about, you have got to get into a long, elaborate conversation to figure out what it is you're doing and then put a proposal on the table. Yeah, you have to frame it. And if you, and, and a website, all it does is just present it, it. You know, it's like window shopping, right? That's it really all it is. It yeah. makes you a commodity. It makes you a commodity. Yes. All right. Final, final mindset. And this is the one that, that when you don't put pricing up or you don't... <laughs> say things like that people go well what like the objections that you can face right like like what if somebody you know i mean i've had people come to me especially with with coaching go well why like and actually it's funny because i've not just objections from clients but when people find out how much i charge for my services they're like Mm -hmm. really like that's more than what a lawyer would charge or whatever i'm like yes but and again i go with the outcome but you know, if you, if, if you, if you, if you, you yep. could say, what, what is your question? That's I, a, I hear yeah, you. What's yeah. your question? So let's talk right. about that because that's a, that's sure. a really good way to frame it because a lot of people, especially with niche kind of stuff that like most right. people don't, when they hire a business coach, that's broader, right? But when they hire sure. a productivity or time management coach, they're like, why? Like, you know, what's the, what's the point? What do I, so you're right. Like what's, so let's talk about that fifth mindset of, of like understanding people's objections and dealing with them, right? Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, it's my favorite because it is so, so powerful because so few of us are addressing objections. And if you learn to do this, you are at a high competitive advantage. Most of us don't want objections. We feel rejected. And just to define objections for our listeners, Mm -hmm. objection is when we've had a conversation or, you know, we were, were talking about possibly engaging together and they say something like, Mike, I'd like to hire you, but... Mm. Whatever follows that but is the reason that they can't quite hire you because there is an objection in their head. There is a question. And our job is to address that, not make it about ourselves and feel rejected and get defensive. All of which I've done, by the way. We all have. We're human. (laughs) Sure. That's how we learn. So 
when objections come up, if you can just think of it as an opportunity and get very curious. So one phrase I can tell you that you can memorize, I learned this from my coach, is, so Mike, uh, give me an objection. Um, you know what, this is, it's just, I can't afford to do this all at once. Hmm. You know, Mike, I really, really hear you. Tell me, what makes you say that? Well, just budgetarily, I, I, I just can't put out that much cash at once. Um, it's just not something that I have the ability to do. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. And I think that we need to explore whether those outcomes are really worth to you, worth the investment, because I would want you to make a decision that's absolutely right for you. And so let's go back and explore whether those outcomes make sense for you, whether you can see the value in them, whether the timing is right in your business or career, and we can revisit the investment again. Okay. Would you like to do that? Yeah, let, let's take a look at that. Okay, so it's just an example of how I got curious because he has a question and I want Mike to understand his own objection really well because most people need our help in making a smart decision for themselves. You know, how many times I have found, I can't count how many times I've found where someone opens up and they are vulnerable enough to share that they could use some help in making a decision and they trust me to have their best interest at heart. And so we are in a very um, powerful position where we need to be true to them and to ourselves. And so in that time, if I don't feel my services make sense for this person, I need to be able to turn them away, send them to someone else, offer something else. And so you want to build that trust. And when you do, people will come to you. They will want to work with you. Maybe not right away. I've had my customers come back in some of them as late as three years later mm -hmm. and make a huge investment because I was serving them in that moment when the timing wasn't right and they could tell. And so there is your opportunity. And, you know, I mean, you talk about like one of the things that, that people need to understand, and I think that this is, this is tricky because we live in this environment where it, the, the, this this sales thing and selling has become such so pervasive that it, it's not always going to be. And if you're listening to how Farnish was talking to me there, it's not always going to be like, oh, look, she's trying to hook him in. That's because that's a mind. That's that's something that uh, yes. that that's it's it's about. And if that conversation had continued, which it would have, um, mm -hmm. it, it likely would have been. You said, well, you know, what, Mike, um, if finances are an issue, but we want to get you closer, here's something that I can offer you. Here's a here's a smaller sure. program. Here's, but it's not about. And, and the thing is, is that if it's just not the right fit, like you said, you're going to send them in a different in, in a different direction. Yeah. Um, I, I think that that's something to we, we tend to I think what we tend to do, I think everybody does this again, we're human, is we tend yeah. to, even when we're the ones that are searching for something, some, some kind of service is we're naturally in the position to make it all about ourselves. And yeah. and we also can fall prey to the. Uh, the, 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 the ego can kind of take over and go, oh, well, this person's just trying to take advantage of me. It, mm -hmm. It's all in how it's framed. And I think that your book, you know, in, in, if you were to go through this book, whether you are somebody who is some trying to serve and, or, or is selling and wants to change your, your, the optics around it, or wants to just feel better about offering your services to somebody, or if you're someone who's like, you know what? I kind of want to get my head wrapped around people who sell me things and make sure that I can identify who the people are that are really like selling versus the people who are really trying to serve. This mm -hmm. book will, I think this book serves both, uh, oddly enough, serves both <laughs> kinds of audiences, right? Right, right, exactly. And, you know, I'll give you a, a real reason not to take on clients that are not right for you or you're not right for them. Mm. Because when you have the right clients, you can really flow. Your work flows. It becomes a joy. The, your your, your pr real purpose comes through. And so, and by the same token, when it's not the right fit, it doesn't, it feels like work. It feels like resistance. And, and you would only know this after experience, but that's one of the biggest motivators in 
seeking the right clients, insisting on the right clients, being willing to turn away someone for whom the timing isn't right, the investment isn't right, the value isn't there because you are not going to be happy serving that person in that in that time frame or in that moment. So does that make sense? Did I say that? No, uh, no, no, totally. And I mean, yeah. here's the other thing that opens opportunities and we'll, we'll kind of get close to wrapping up here. I got a, uh, one more question sure. after this, but um, I'll give you, I'll give you an example from personal experience is uh, I had a client who was in California and they were um, the fires were happening down there. And uh-huh. this client, by the way, I haven't worked with in a while. And I made a point of emailing that client because I saw I was watching the news. I'm like, oh, there's the fires happening down there. I know this person lives in that area. I'm going to drop them an email. No, no pretenses. No, no, nothing. Just saying, hey, I hope you're okay. Like, I I, I see what's mm-hmm. going on. I hope you're okay. Uh, I got an email back saying, you know, what was going on? There's been nothing since then, but I didn't do it to see I there's a difference between going in to a situation like that going hey I'm going to reach out to this client and use this situation as an opportunity to re-engage and hopefully right. have them come back that wasn't my intent at all my intent was to say hey you're a human I'm a human you're in a situation that I would not want to be in and I I I just happen to know you're there I just want to make sure that you're okay and Absolutely. and know that you're in my thoughts and then leave it at that and that and when you are when you put this this mindset in place and I, I, believe me i mean there's a lot i can learn from this book as well from from what you, you shared in this book um i have inklings of it <laughs> to a degree and that would have been an inkling of it of being able to say you know i don't work with so many clients that i'm able to remember yeah. that this client who i hadn't worked with in a while lived in that area and just to drop them a note to say hey i'm thinking of you i hope you're okay and and Absolutely. when and, and that that's when you and that's when you know you're doing the right kind of work when you feel that not only you can you a you remember to do that but b you can do it and feel like this is this is the human thing to do because that's what service ser- i mean serve yeah. like serving is the one of the most human things you can do right yes 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 you know how to serve most of us if not all of us who go into business we know how to serve. You don't need to take serving 101. You know how to do it. I think it's understanding how it can actually be the way you do the whole process as opposed to I'm serving, but then I also have to sell. No, serving can lead that the selling needs to be an organic outcome. And um, it's great that, you know, you, you felt like you could express that you care about your client. I, I build long-term relationships with my clients and I have to tell you, they come back because, you know, if they need something else over the years, they tend to come back to me versus go and build a relationship with someone else if it makes sense. And so or the, or, uh, or they or they refer you. Right. Absolutely. Like there's that, yes. too. Right. So and that's the thing is if you adopt something like this, um, you don't know who they are, who these people are going to be connected to. Right. So, yes. I mean, you it's it's you know, and that's another reason why if you are trying to if you if you adopt this mindset, if you adopt the serving mindset, you're going to be able to do things like treat everyone at, on the same level so that when. Because you, you know, the same, just just as if the person who can afford your high ticket item, if that's what you have, versus the person who can buy your book, you're going to be able. I mean, you have to. You can't categorize in terms of no, you can't we'll never put people in boxes. No. In fact, that's one of the things I talk about because you would be wrong every single time, yeah. especially when it comes to the pricing. You may think this person can afford me, this person cannot. You're going to be wrong every time. Don't let them make that decision because different people will surprise you. And um, it's, it's wonderful to just treat everyone the same mm-hmm. with the same level of respect and serving and uh, let the um and let the opportunities come to you as they may. So um, a companion book to read with this would be Ego is the Enemy <laughs> by Ooh, Ryan really? Holiday, right? Ah, because, okay, I haven't read it. Oh, mm-hmm. it's great because, you know, the ego can often be the thing that gets in the way. And I think if you read the <sighs> the, the, the tandem opportunity here between these two books would be great. Uh, you know, Farnish, before I let you go, if someone was going to start today, they're like, you know what, I'm waiting for the book to show up or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I want to I'm going to go visit your site and learn about you. But what's one action that they can take today that they can start to adopt this, that they can take that will help them to adopt this mindset or any of these five mindsets uh, right out of the gate? 
One action they can take is, and, and again, I keep thinking mindset when, when you said action, is, is to educate yourself, whether it's through the Serving Mindset, my book, or other resources online, or or anything else that you find. If you decide this is the way you're going to do business for yourself, educate yourself. Make it your goal to self-educate yourself on how you can bring serving into your business one day at a time. How's that? That's great. Um, Farnish, this has been a great, great <laughs> chat. Went on along a little bit longer than usual, but I think this is important because I think as much as time management and productivity may not necessarily seem intrinsically linked to this, I think that, like, for example, if you follow my work, you could create, uh, and I've actually done this with clients. I've had clients who uh, they, they'll theme their time and they'll, or they'll use mode-based work and they'll say, I'm going to go into serving mode and then self-serving mode. And ironically, mm-hmm. if you go into serving mode first, uh, then and then go into self-serving mode, you ironically, the self-serving stuff ends up serving anybody anyway, because you mm-hmm. already got that mindset. So that's something to consider. And, and I'll probably write more about that in the future. But what I want to share with you is you can pick up the serving mindset, stop selling and grow your business from where, where can people get this? And where and, and where can they find out more about you and your work? Sure. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to speak to you, Mike. And I hope your listeners found value in our conversation. The serving mindset is on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and and we're hoping to get it into um, other specialty shops, bookstores, maybe Costco's. But for now, I think Amazon is your best bet. Awesome. Farnish, thanks for joining me today on the Productivity is Podcast. Thank you, sir. Big thanks to Farnish Brock for joining me this week on the show. Of course, you can get all of the uh, tidbits and relevant links in the show notes. Just go to productivityist.transistor.fm slash 220 to get all of that goodness. Uh, And also don't forget to pick up the serving mindset, stop selling and grow your business. The link to get that will be in the show notes as well. Uh, Thanks for listening this week. Uh, Thanks for listening to past episodes. If you have, if you haven't, hit that subscribe button in your podcast app of choice, whether that's Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or wherever you're listening to this, because uh, I want to get more people listening to this show. Uh, You know, I've had some great guests in the past and I've got more great guests coming up. Uh, You can do that, of course, by just subscribing to the show. And that way you don't miss a a single episode. And if you like this episode or you like what you've heard on past episodes, uh, then you can leave a rating or review in wherever you're listening to podcasts. It helps me make the show better. It helps my producer, John Polstra, who I'd like to thank once again for helping put the show together it helps him because then we talk about the stuff and then we make the show better and it's just a win-win all the way around and if you leave a review it gives us even more context to go by so ratings and reviews are always appreciated that's it for this week thanks so much for joining me on the productivity podcast i'm your host mike vardy reminding you to stop guessing and start going